All right, let's now talk about the extreme value theorem. The extreme value theorem says that if f is a continuous function on a closed interval, we'll say from a to b, then f obtains an absolute max and an absolute min on that closed interval. Again, important to this, two important things. We're only talking about what's happening on that closed interval. And the other thing is we're talking about a closed interval. And maybe you don't have a lot of experience with closed and open intervals. But real fast, I'll show you a graphical representation of what's going on here. So let's take a continuous function, right? Remember, the definition of a continuous function means that every, at every point, the output value is exactly the same as the limit value. Um, but graphically speaking, it just means you have these nice, smooth curves. So let's say we have a function that looks something like this. And we'll define A to be this starting point right here and B to be this end point for this function right here. The extreme value theorem does not say anything if we don't go all the way to A and all the way to B. Now here's the importance of a closed interval, and this is a bit trippy and almost even hard to think about. But in this case right here, if I had these open circles, right, where I'm just saying between A and B, but not all the way to A and not all the way to B, you might be thinking, well, I could find an absolute min value or the smallest value right here. But as close as you get to A, and this is the trippy part, as close as you get to the A, there's still an infinite number of points that are closer to A than any point you choose. So you actually couldn't identify an absolute min value. The extreme value theorem says you have to have a closed interval. So you go all the way to your endpoints between A and B. And once you do that, then you can be guaranteed, as long as your function is continuous on that closed interval, you are guaranteed to have an absolute min value. In this case, that would be this value right here, whatever it is. And an absolute max, in this case, it would be this value right here. So we're here we're given a polynomial, 5 plus 54x minus 2x cubed on a closed interval from zero to four. What we're going to do is first identify all of the critical numbers for this function. Again, to find the critical numbers, what I'm going to do is differentiate it and find out whether the derivative is equal to zero or where it doesn't exist. In this case, again, I'm just using the power rule here. I get uh, zero plus 54 minus six x squared. So let me clean this up a little bit. Let's get 54 minus six x squared. I want to find out uh, where this is zero. I know it's not undefined anywhere because it's a polynomial. So let's do this. And uh, I could add 6x. Actually, I'm going to try to factor this. I'm going to factor out a 6 first. So I pull out a 6 out of this. I get a 9 minus x squared. And then uh, this is actually a difference of squares, making this pretty easy. This is simply uh, 3 plus x times 3 minus x. And this gives me uh, critical numbers of x equals negative 3 and x equals 3. So I've defined my critical numbers. Now what I'm going to do, if you remember the conversation we had a second ago, I first find all my critical numbers. Now what I'm going to do are find those critical numbers that land on my interval, and I'm going to compare those to the endpoints. Because my absolute max and absolute min are either going to occur at the end points on those intervals or at one of my critical number values. All right, so I identified my critical numbers. What I'm now gonna simply do are plug in zero, three, and four into my original function. Again, zero and four are my end points. And three is the one critical number that I got that lands on this interval. I now don't care about negative three because it doesn't, isn't, isn't on the interval from zero to four. When I plug in zero into my function, I get out five. When I plugged in a 3 into my function, I got 113. And when I plugged a 4 into my function, I got 93. So for this function on the closed interval from 0 to 4, I have an absolute minimum value at x equals 0. My absolute minimum value is 5. And my absolute maximum value occurs at x equals 3. My absolute maximum value is 113. Again, quick recap of all of this. First of all, your function needs to be continuous on a closed interval. If it is, then we know we reach an absolute max and an absolute min. First thing you do are identify those critical numbers that we talked about. After you identify the critical points that land on the interval, then what you do second is you take the endpoints in any of those critical numbers that landed on those interval and you evaluate the original function to identify your absolute max and your absolute min value.